We want the answer tomorrow, tonight. We want the answer tonight. They spend all this money. They spend all this money, and old-fashioned paper is much less expensive. And you know what? It's more accurate. It's much better. They just — something's going on with this. I mean, what the hell are they doing? But we want the — we don't want to wait 10 days, 12 days, three days, two days, or two hours. We want the answer tonight. So we live in an occupied country, and I will tell you, we will be an occupied country no longer. This will take very, you know, these, these young guys, you know, these have military-type equipment, highest-grade, highest-level, supreme military equipment. Where the hell do they get this stuff? They've taken over large parts of Colorado. They've taken over parts of numerous states, and a lot of people don't want to talk about it because they think it's going to destroy their city or town. They're all over the place. And when they're not, those people running those towns, when they're not, they are going to — they're petrified. They don't want them coming in. In one town in Ohio, as you know, they have a beautiful town of — think of this — 50,000 people, and they dumped 30,000 migrants into the town. So you have 50,000, now you have 30,000 migrants. Springfield, Ohio. It's a beautiful — it's a beautiful place, gorgeous place. And now, if you want to go to the hospital, you can't. If you want to get a checkup, you can't. If you want to find a doctor, you can't. If you want to get your kid into school, you can't. It's a whole different world. It can't be — we can't allow this to happen. They're destroying our country. November 5th, 2024, will be Liberation Day in America. On day one, I will launch the largest deportation program of criminals in American history. I will rescue every city and town that has been invaded and conquered. Can you believe I'm running for this great office and I'm talking about rescuing cities and towns that have been invaded and conquered. Can you imagine 10 years ago? Can you imagine 10 years ago using language like that? Or saying, we will not allow men to play in women's sport. You know, if, if you go back just 10 years and you move yourself forward and you heard a politician saying, we will not allow men to play in women's sports, they'll think, is this guy crazy? Of course they're not going to play to expedite removals of Trende, Aragua, and other savage gangs like MS-13. Trende is from Venezuela, Venezuela prison system, and they are rough. They are rough. I will invoke the Alien Enemies Act of 1798 to target and dismantle every migrant criminal network operating on American soil. And if they come back into our country, it's an automatic 10 years in jail with no possibility of parole, because we don't want them back. And I'm hereby calling for the death penalty for any migrant that kills an American citizen or a law enforcement officer. And I will ban all sanctuary cities in the United States of America. They're sanctuary for criminals. Four years of Kamala have delivered nothing but economic hell for American workers. The workers are getting destroyed. Her inflation disaster has made life unaffordable and cost families over $30,000 in higher prices. Think of that. Who can afford that? Just days ago, we had the worst jobs report in modern history. I never wanted to be Herbert Hoover. And I'm glad these numbers are coming out now. I'll fix it, but, boy, it's getting bad. 12,000 jobs were announced. Now, usually you hear 200, 250, you know, you hear it for years and years. 12,000 jobs. And then they, then they became frauds. It was a fraud on the country because 
They made up numbers. 30,000 private sector jobs were killed in a single month, and nearly 100,000 manufacturing jobs have been wiped out since just the start of the year. You don't hear these numbers from the fake news. 150,000 Americans joined the unemployment rolls in October. 150,000. These are depression-type numbers. And nearly a quarter of a million people dropped out of the labor force. Just think, a few months ago, they fraudulently claimed 818,000 jobs were created, when in fact, there were none. They said 818,000 jobs were created in our country, which kept us, and what that did is it kept us like, okay, it wasn't great, but it was like not record-shattering or anything, but it was a lie. And they thought they'd be able to get away with it until after the election, and then announce after the election that they made a mistake. These are bad people. Fortunately, there was a whistleblower who I think should be entitled to an award. Could you imagine if it were me and we lost the election, and then a few days later they say that the job numbers are being revised by almost a million people. And now they've just revised it again. On top of the 818,000, 112,000 fake jobs were just announced. So you add that up, and it's almost 1 million fraudulent jobs were announced. And nothing happens. These guys don't report about it. If, if, I, if I was talking about, if I was talking about two jobs, it would be like front page on every newspaper. They cheated. And it's fraud. You know, when they make mistakes, they make them for, for 2,000, 3,000. There was never eight, 818,000 jobs right before the election were announced, and they turned out to be a fraud. And they were going to announce the revision after the election was over. What the hell kind of an election would that have been? So I want to thank this whistleblower. Meanwhile, 100% of the net jobs created in the last year have gone to migrants. Think of that. 100%. 100% of the jobs that were created went to migrants, not to people. And I'll tell you what, your black population is being devastated by these people. They're taking all the, the black population jobs away. And w they should announce those numbers before the election also, because, frankly, what's happening there, you're going to see some bad things happen. They're taking their jobs, and the Hispanic population is going to be next. You watch. It's horrible. But if I win, it's going to be not so horrible, because we'll fix it. <laughs> These are depression-type numbers, and that's where we're heading if she's elected. And if she's elected, we're talking about a 1929-style Depression. Under my leadership, we are quickly going to turn this economic nightmare into an economic miracle. We're going to make it a miracle. We will make America wealthy again, and we will make America affordable again. And we're just one day, meaning a half a day, sir, away from the best jobs, the biggest paychecks, and the brightest economic future the world has ever seen. But you must vote. You gotta vote. You gotta vote. Kamala's plan will impose the largest tax hike in American history. I've never heard anybody campaign. I've done this stuff for a long time, but I've been involved for a very long time supporting candidates. And candidates are always saying, we will reduce your taxes, efficiency, all this stuff. They're running on the fact that they're going to raise taxes substantially. I've never heard that. This is the craziest campaign I've ever seen. We will raise your taxes. Vote for us. <laughs> Mondale. Mondale. He says Mondale. I think you're right. We're going to raise your taxes. But they're going to do that on the typical family, American family. They're raising the taxes more than $3,000 a year. My plan will massively cut taxes for workers and small businesses that we will have no tax on tips, no tax on overtime, and no tax for our great seniors on Social Security benefits. 
To rapidly reduce inflation, I will end Kamala's war on American energy, and we will drill, baby, drill. We're going to drill, baby, drill, 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 drill. And I will cut your energy prices in half within 12 months, okay? When that happens, everything's coming down. The donuts are going to come down. The food is going to come down, as we say, the groceries. I just told the story in Pittsburgh. A woman, elderly, goes to a supermarket and takes three apples and brings the apples to the counter. And then she realizes that the price went up yet again. And she doesn't have the money for them. And she walks. She excuses herself. She walks back to the refrigerator, puts the apple back in refrigeration, and walks back and buys the two apples. That shouldn't be happening in our country. That should not be happening. And we're not going to have it happen long. I will cancel Kamala's insane electric vehicle mandate. And I will make interest on car loans fully tax deductible. So how about that? Nobody — people — the, the br most brilliant people — is that Scott Besant over there? Where's Scott? Scott, stand up. He said he's one of the most brilliant people on Wall Street. Do you agree, Scott, that you're one of the most brilliant people on Wall Street? Because everybody else says it. He's too shy to say it. But he's a — you know what his theory is? The stock market is the only sign of life. And it's only going up because everyone thinks Trump is going to win the election. Yeah. And others, too. Others, too. I'm seeing it a lot. I think they're following your lead. But I appreciate that confidence. It's very nice. He's a brilliant guy. But so they call up and they say, brilliant guys are calling me up. And they say, where would you come up? On a car loan, we're going to give people — we want to develop the car business in this country. On a car loan, we're going to give people the right to deduct the interest — deduct interest. But only if the car is made in the USA. What the hell do I care if a car is going to be made in? If a car is going to be made in Japan or China or someplace else, what the hell? I don't care if they buy it. I want them to buy cars. So think of that, what that's going to do for Michigan. So if a car is made in Michigan, you get a big deduction. That's like — that's going to be — somebody. So I started just with a deduction. Then I thought to myself, you know, why should I give them a deduction to buy a car that's made in China or Japan or South Korea? Well, I don't — you know, look, I mean, they're wonderful people. Everyone's wonderful. But I want them to be built here. So then I came in with that little extra tip. And it says, but you only get the deduction if the car is made in America. Isn't that like, cool? And hopefully right here in, in Detroit and Michigan would be great. We're thrilled to be joined by your next senator, Mike Rogers. Mike, thank you very much. Thank you. You're doing great. This guy is doing great. He is amazing. I think you're — I'll tell you, you know, it's hard to beat some of these people because they lie. I heard she's another one. She's going around saying she's very close to Trump. She agrees with Donald Trump on the tariffs and the wall and the this, but she never agreed until about two weeks ago when she was losing, right? No, she's doing — but I have about six of them that are doing that. They're doing that with, against Bernie R Marino. They got a guy running against him, Brown, Sherrod Brown. I love President Trump very much. He's great. You know, we're leading. I'm leading, you know how, by like almost 20 points or something. So all of a sudden, they love me. They all love me. And the day after the election, he'll be calling for my impeachment. Let's impeach him. These people are sick. But we have great members. And Mike is, is really a talented guy, respected all over Washington. He was there. He was very successful. And I hope he can represent you, because he's, he's going to be one of the stalwarts. He'll be a leader. Thank you very much. And also, members of Congress, John Joyce, Bill Heisinger, Tim Wahlberg, John Molinaire. I saw you guys. A very good speech you guys made. Boy, you really were rocking them, huh? You guys, very different styles, but tremendous talents and really good. Thank you very much. They really are tremendous. You have a great bunch here. I don't say that with all states. Some states, I'm not so thrilled, but that's okay.
and governors, Sarah Huckabee Sanders. Where's Sarah? She's so great. She is so great, right? Proud of her. I saw her father the other day. I served on a panel with him. And uh, I said, you know, Mike, I think you're great. He, you know, he endorsed me when I was running. She gave me a four-page endorsement. And I think the endorsement was put out before I finished my speech. And I said, you know, you're great. He said, well, I appreciate that, but my daughter is far greater. How about that? Is that nice? My daughter is greater, he said. And he's not a man without an ego, I will tell you. Right, Sarah? But he said, my daughter is greater. That's beautiful. That's a beautiful thing that he said. He's an incredible guy. And Doug Burgum, who has become one of the real stars of the party. And Catherine, stand up. I first noticed Doug by looking at Catherine. She was riding a horse in an ad. I said, who the hell is that? But I don't look anymore. No, beauty doesn't mean a damn thing to me anymore. It doesn't mean anything, but I did notice there was a woman, and to the left there was a man riding, but I didn't notice him so much. But it was this couple, and you know the ad I'm trying to be. It was beautiful. It's like the most beautiful. He looked like the Marlboro Man, whatever happened to him. But what a combination. And he's become one of the most successful governors. What he's done with the fracking and with the oil and gas and everything has become... Something special. He's done a great job. Thank you both very much for being here. Appreciate it. And former Congresswoman and Democrat candidate for president who did very well. She's — I've watched her for a long time. She's a woman of incredible intelligence, but maybe more than anything else, unbelievable common sense and very, very special. She just joined the Republican Party, by the way. She was an independent for years. Tulsi Gabbard. Tulsi, thank you. And a man who's very special, with a great talent. He was the ambassador to Germany. And I'll never forget when I took him out, the happiest person in the world was Angela Merkel. When Rick Grinnell was taken out, this was the best day in Angela's life. He was our — he was not your typical ambassador. He was somebody who would say, this is no good what's happening. And actually, it was a love-hate. They really loved him, but they said he's a smart one. He was wise to what they were doing. Rick Grinnell. Where is Rick? Thank you. Thank you, Rick. And a woman who uh, ran a very good race. It was a hard race because, you know, she believes in things, that, and she believes in them very strongly. And I say, you always have to stick with your beliefs. It's very tough. Uh, it's, I told her, it's very tough. But she's a hell of a woman. She had a father who I knew. He was a steelman. He was in the steel business. He was thankful when I put the tariffs on because we saved the steel industry. And he was a real pro. He passed away, but he was a great guy. But he'd be very proud of his daughter. His daughter's an incredible woman. Tudor Dixon. Thank you, Tudor. Thank you. We miss your father, right? He was — what a great guy he was. And then we have a woman who drives extremely fast. She can drive a car. And, you know, just very successful. Won races. But she's very successful. It takes tremendous courage and strength and everything else. It takes everything. I think driving those cars at 220 and 240 miles an hour, boy, you got to be brave. Probably have to be a little bit crazy, Danica Bradrick, right? You have to be a little crazy, right? But it's Danica. And such an honor to have you involved, Danica. Such an honor. She's so smart. We were talking about — I'm just — I just can't believe it, how I was asking her questions on the plane over about, how do you do it? How do you do it? Because, you know, they had me in one of these cars that start the race, and I'm sitting in the car, and we're going, like, 60 miles less than what you travel at. And I'm saying to the driver, uh, are you okay? He was okay. But uh, it's an honor to have you involved. You're a really special, a really incredible athlete. She's an incredible athlete. 
And another person that was very honest and very talented and doing an incredible job, but she was extremely honest. And sometimes you can be honest and it doesn't work out, but it's actually worked out really well because she's doing phenomenally well, better than before. Sage Steele, thank you very much, sir. And Michigan Republican Party Chairman Pete Hoekstra. Now, I told Pete, I've known Pete for a long time. He was very, very successful at everything he did, and he was an ambassador. He was one of the best. And I said, Pete, you got to come in and run the party. You got to do it for me. And it was not that easy. He has a lot of options, and he came in. And I mean, I think we're going to have a great result later. But uh, Pete came in and ran the party, and I'll tell you, it is so organized, it's so professional. I think we're going to win. I mean, I think we're going to win in Michigan. Seems to be. We can't let him forget that I stopped that big Chinese plant in Mexico, Pete. Put that on top. But no, that was the thing. Nobody else would do that. I did it without being president. They just said, uh, oh. but they know it's not going to be easy for them. They won't. Uh, they're going to. Let's put it this way. If they build it, they're going to lose their ass, okay? So I want to thank you, Pete. You've done incredible. And a man who I fell in love with, actually, he's an auto worker and a union guy, but he saw what was happening. He saw the look. I mean, you take a look at this area and go back 50, 60 years, it's been just a downward trend. It looks like, do you ever see a chart? It's like, right, Brian? It's like just a downward, like a sliding ramp. Brian Pannebecker from the Auto Workers for Trump. Brian, come up here for a second. Come here. Come here. I got to see it. I love this guy. I want to have, I always wanted arms like him. He's got the biggest, meanest arms. They look like what grabs that rocket. He could grab the rocket. Tell them a little bit about what you see going on. And I tell you, he's just an incredible guy. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Mr. President. It's an honor to be here at your very last campaign rally. Um, I, gotta, I gotta give a shout out to Scott Hagerstrom right out here. He brought me to Novi when you were holding a rally there in September of 2016. You were a candidate before you were president. And I got backstage and got to meet you. And I told you the, the little song about Macomb County, home of the Reagan Democrats. I said, Mr. Trump, if you come to Macomb County and ask for the Reagan Democrats' support, which is basically the UAW members, and I got a few of them here with me tonight. I said, if you come to Macomb County and ask for the Reagan Democrats' support and you get it, you might win Macomb County big enough to carry the whole state of Michigan. I said, Mr. Trump, if you win Michigan, we both know what that means. You win the White House. And that's exactly what happened. So we're going to do it again this year. The UAW represented auto workers are going to vote 65% or more for Donald Trump for president. And we're going to carry Michigan again. Thank you, Brian. Great guy. Great guy. And you're a great guy. I appreciate that support. I appreciate that support. Thank you very much. It's terrific. You gave us a beauty there, didn't you, huh? He's a worker. Michigan Senate Republican leader, Eric Nesbitt. Eric, thank you very much. Great. Great job. You're doing beautiful. And Michigan House Republican leader, Matt Hall. Tremendous guy. The great Steve Whitcuff, great businessman, the most generous person I know. He gives a lot of money. Every time there's a hurricane, he wants to give money, and he's just great. And Howard Lutnick, uh, he's uh, working along with my children and uh, Linda McMahon, who's fantastic, and they're working on transition. But I said, don't worry about transition. Let's win this thing first, okay? We'll work on transition. But he's one of the most respected people on Wall Street, uh, rebuilt his firm after it was taken out of the World Trade Center by that horror show act. Long ago now, but it's uh, still very emblazoned in all of 
all of our minds. But uh, so, Howard, thank you very much. Howard Lutnick, thank you very much. And my great children, should I have them come up real fast? Okay. Don, Eric, Tiffany, Laura, Michael, come on up here. And we have Ivanka at home, sitting home, watching every second of it. And we have Baron, my beautiful boy, Baron. Baron, he knows more about computers than anybody. I closed up his computer. He said, Dad, I'll take it two minutes to figure that out. And all of a sudden, the damn thing opened up. I said, Barrett, you got to turn it off. Okay, watch. Re -re I turn it off. It's no way. I put a separate code in. He's operating his computer. He's operating it two minutes later. So this group here, they are so committed. They didn't have to do this. I guess we all didn't have to do it, but we have to because they want to see our country be so great and so strong and so respected again. When people laugh at, they're laughing at our leaders. We have a guy can't walk. He can't find the stairways. Look, there's about six of them up. He finishes his speech. He can't find the stairways. And she's worse than him. You see what's going on. Did you see it tonight? Screaming, we're going to win, we're going to win. And she's screaming. And it's like a hundred people going, what the hell is wrong with her? But these people are behind me. I, I love them, but they are really special. They're very talented people. And uh, every one of them. Maybe, maybe I'll ask Laura to start and say a couple of words. Could I do that? She is. She's the chairman of the party. Comes from North Carolina. I wanted her to run for the Senate. There was nobody could have beat her. But she said, you know, I have a great husband, and I have beautiful kids, and I really want to focus on them for a little while, because she's been working hard. And she would have been great. And I said, who do you like? And they said, Ted Budd. And I went to Ted. I said, Ted, do you like it? He said, but I'm not going to run if Laura runs. I said, well, she wants you. She likes you a lot. And he's become a great senator, but she could have. But then she becomes like the chairman, along with Michael Watley. Is Michael Watley here someplace? Yes. And, and I wanted. The mayor of Hamtramck is here. Come here. Are we, I didn't see. I see you. This is come. You got to come up here, please. This guy has been with us almost from the beginning. He is. I'm so glad we got to see you. Hi, Michael. Thank you. Thank you. Come here. He has been an unbelievable unifier. This is one of the greatest men in your state, and I want to just thank you. Come here, say a couple of words. Thank you so much. Well, good morning. It's another day. I spoke earlier before you came, and I told the crowd that uh, tomorrow, or today actually, is going to be a historic day. And we shall celebrate a historic victory today. I, I'm very proud that I endorsed President Trump and I broke the wall of fear among the Arab American and Muslim Americans. And I destroyed that wall of isolation and the wall of silence and the wall of hesitance among the Arab Americans. And now, today, we had a survey that was posted among the Arab Americans in the Metro Detroit, and it shows that President Trump is leading by 76 percent. Yeah. And Harris earlier had 3 percent. And the rest was for others. So we are in a mission to end that disconnect between the minorities and the Republican Party and to make it the party of inclusion. And we are in a mission, which is the priority for us today, to send President Trump back to the White House. So like I said earlier, 
He has done everything possible to gain your support. He told me last Friday that it was 62 days of hard work with no break and no rest, and today it's 65 days with no rest. So he has used everything possible to gain your support. Hard work, seriousness, comedy, sarcasm, everything. So how is he a threat to our democracy as they keep, the fake news keeps saying, and the other party? So I ask you and I urge you to go out and vote tomorrow. And I think we have a big chance. I'm very optimistic that we will make history and we will win and make America great again. Thank you so much. He's a great man, and I'll tell you, you have hundreds of thousands of people that follow, and uh, that could be a very big uh, difference. They are, the Democrats are not happy about this. This was supposed to be their vote, and they're not at all happy. But uh, really a great, great, great young guy. He's a young guy, and uh, wow, what a leader. So thank you very much. If we win, this state, you're going to be very responsible for it, too. And I think we will. And tonight I got, you know, I did a thing a couple of weeks ago with a very smart guy and very special, and a very special talent. He's got the number one podcast, they say, by like four times. Joe Rogan. And a lot of people, a lot of people thought they loved that. It was three hours. Oh, it was so terrible because I did it. And I said, Joe, I got a rally of this size waiting for me in a very far away place. I'm going to be very late, like two and a half hours late. But we kept talking. It went three hours and 15 minutes or something. Then when I got up there, it was cold, a little bitter, and everybody waited. Nobody left. And I explained to him, look, Joe is the number one guy he kept me late, but I'm doing it because we have to win. And not one person was unhappy. We had a great time, and I said, we're going to devote a lot more time. It was pretty late at night. It was worse than this, okay? I can tell you. But Joe Rogan just announced, and he doesn't do this at all. I don't think he's ever done it, but he just announced that he's giving me his complete and total endorsement. <laughs> Wow. So, Laura, would you say a few words, please? <laughs> Are we ready to turn Michigan red today? Today is the day that we send a loud and clear message to the mainstream media, to the establishment, to Hollywood, to the swamp, that it is not them. It is we, the people, who get to choose our president. And we're choosing Donald J. Trump. I just want to say thank you. This is a very special night for our family. This has been almost a decade of doing this, and it has been my honor to be a part of this family to be out speaking on behalf of a man who I love, not just because he's my father-in-law, but because he is going to save this country and going to save the world. Thank you, guys. God bless you. Get everybody out to vote. Thank you, Michigan. Thank you, guys. Today, when you wake up with not very much sleep, you got to get to the polls. 
You got to bring your friends and your families and your loved ones, and we have to make it too big to rig. <laughs> Guys, it's simple. It's a unique election. You've lived under both candidates. People like to pretend like it's not the Harris-Biden regime that has destroyed your American dream, our country, our economy, the entire world, and Western civilization. Well, you guys, starting right now, it's on you to reclaim what is yours, your country. It would be an honor for me, for you guys, to show the same amount of resolve that this man showed on July 13th when he took a bullet to the face and came back defiant. You guys take that attitude to the polls, to your text messages, to your friends. If you've early voted, drive everyone you know to the polls. That resolve is what kept us at peace. That resolve is what made trade deals. That resolve is going to save America, and it's going to put America first again, once and for all. So guys, now, now it's up to you. You make our country proud like he makes us proud each and every day. Let's get it done, America. Let's get it done, Michigan. Let's go. Well, good morning, Michigan. Who else could have this many people at 2 a.m.? Only Donald Trump. Guys, I've watched the hell that they put him through for the last 10 years. I mean, the fake impeachments, the dossiers, the Russia hoax, going after his Supreme Court justices, censoring him, taking away his First Amendment right trying to take him off the ballots in various states all across the country, raiding his home. And yet he comes out every single day, and he fights, and he fights, and he fights. And when other candidates have packed it in for the night, you know who's standing on the stage at 2 a.m.? It's Donald Trump. America, it's time for us to pick our fighter, and it's that man right there. And I can tell you, as a son, as a family, we have never been more proud of a person in our life. I have never been more proud to stand on a stage with somebody in my life. He's the most remarkable man I know, and I promise you I will be on the stage till the end of earth with you because I truly believe in you. And I believe what you're doing for this country and what you're doing for our children. And you are going to save democracy in the United States. And you're going to keep peace in the world. And I love you and we're proud of you. And let's make America great again. Thank you, Michigan. never stop working for you guys. So let's get out there. Let's vote for prosperity. Let's vote for the future that we want to have for our children and for our future generations. Thank you. They're my kids, but I'll tell you, they're very good people. They're good people. They're great people that love our country, and they're working. They don't have to do this. They don't have to do this. So in conclusion, with your vote, we are going to fire Kamala, and we're going to save America. We will cut your taxes and inflation. 
Slash your prices, raise your wages, and bring thousands of factories back to America and back to Michigan. And a lot of it will be using my favorite word, my favorite word, tariff. And one of the things I'm going to do, I'll give you this as a little insight. I just announced it in Pittsburgh. I didn't think I'd have, it's become a very big story already, so. We're going to tell Mexico you're killing tremendous numbers of our people by allowing China to send their fentanyl through your system and through your country. And we're going to give them a little period of time. But we don't want drugs coming across our border or any border. And whether it's Mexico or Canada or wherever, because they're starting now in Canada, they're starting to go up north. But whether it's Mexico or Canada, we're going to explain to them quickly that if you allow fentanyl and these drugs to come through, through your country, we're going to charge you large-scale tariffs on everything you send into the United States. And they're making a lot of money in the United States. They couldn't uh, exist without us. So we're going to do that. And we're going to tell China that if you continue to send fentanyl to Mexico or any place else that comes into our country, we're going to charge you a 25 percent tariff on everything you sell into the United States of America. We're not going to let — we can't let them — and you've never heard that from anybody but me. And I've had it in my mind for a long time, but I didn't want to tell these guys about it because they'd only screw it up like they do everything else. But I say it now because now — because now we have the election coming up in a matter of hours, hours, hours. And uh, we're not going to let them destroy our country. Most of our crime, probably 60 percent of our crime, is caused by drugs. People that are taking drugs, they cause tremendous amounts of crime. If we didn't have that, you'd see crime rates plummet. But, you know, the sad thing is that crime is plummeting all over the world because they're sending their criminals, they're sending their gang members, they're sending their drug dealers, they're sending their mental patients from all of these institutions. They're sending them into our country, and then they're, they're opening up Oh, we're sending them back. Don't worry about it. They're opening up their prisons, and they're dumping their prisons. All their prison population, Venezuela, they're way down. Their crime rate went way down because they're taking all of their criminals and terrorists and all of the people that are causing all the problems. And then on top of it, they're emptying their jails out into the United States through this very stupid person's open border. I don't know what they're thinking about. But they uh, — maybe they hate our country, or maybe they want to get people registered to vote. Who the hell knows? But we're not going to allow it. It's going to stop immediately, day one. We're going to build America. We're going to buy America, and we will hire America. I will end the war in Ukraine. Would have never started if I were president. You know, we got — more votes. We did great in 2016. We did better in 2020. We got more votes in 2020 than any president by millions, any president in the history of our country. And because of that, I said, I'll sit back and I'll watch. And if they do a bad job — I didn't need this every <laughs> time — but if they do a bad job, I'm going to run because of how well we did. And if they do a good job, I would actually prefer that they did a great job. If they did a great job, I would say that's a, a great thing. But, I mean, he's the worst president in the history of our country. She's the worst vice president. She got no votes. You know, they like to see — they like to say — they like to say to me, uh, that's not the democratic way to go. You know, it's not it's, — it's just a terrible thing. It's not a — it's just a terrible thing. At what's going on in this country. But so I sat back and I watched and I saw all the horrible things that were happening, and you know what they are. And maybe the worst was what they've done with inflation, but I actually think the worst is what they've done with their border because we're 
They're destroying our country. We're going to turn it around. We're going to change it really fast. We're going to have the greatest country we've ever had. I will stop the chaos in the Middle East. It would have never happened again. Israel would have never been attacked on October 7th. And I will prevent World War III from happening. I know all the players. And it's a very good chance that it will indeed happen. We will crush violent crime and give our police the support, protection, resources, and respect that they so dearly deserve. We will strengthen and modernize our military. They gave so much of it away to Afghanistan. It's so crazy. I rebuilt our military. We will build a missile defense shield around our country, all made in the USA, and much of it made right here. And Ronald Reagan wanted to do it many years ago, and he really was right, other than we did not have the technology. I'm glad we didn't do it. But now we can shoot a needle out of the air. We can shoot a little pin out of the air. It's incredible technology, our technology. We will rebuild our cities, including our capital in Washington, D.C., which is in terrible shape with graffitis on the beautiful, incredible marble columns and painting the lions and burning the American flag.